this, watch this. structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I set him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And precisely, 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him at the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal... Look out! <laughs> What is it, hot? It's cold. Air cold. <laughs> Einstein, you little devil! Einstein's clock is exactly one minute behind mine. It's still ticking. He's all right. He's fine. And he's completely unaware that anything happened. As far as he's concerned, the trip was instantaneous. That's why his watch is exactly one minute behind mine. He skipped over that minute to instantly arrive at this moment in time. Come here. I'll show you how it works. All right. First, you turn the time circuits on. <laughs> this readout tells you where you're going. This one tells you where you are. This one tells you where you were. Huh. You input your destination time on this keypad. Say you want to see the sign of the Declaration of Independence. Or witness the birth of Christ? Here's a red-letter date in the history of science. November 5th, 1955. Yes, of course. November 5th, 1955. Why? I don't get what happened. <laughs> that was the day I invented time travel. I remember it vividly. I was standing on the edge of my toilet, hanging a clock. The porcelain was wet. I slipped, hit my head on the edge of the sink. And when I came to, I had a revelation, a vision, a picture in my head, a picture of this. This is what makes time travel possible, the flux capacitor. Flux capacitor? It's taken me almost 30 years of my entire family fortune to realize the vision of that day. My god, has it been that long? Things have certainly changed around here. Thank you very much. Yes. I have a machine to help you to calculate a future time. And that machine is called Microsoft Excel. So, so what does that mean, right? It's this here. Now, you can use the workday functions. The workday functions. You key in the today's date. And then you say one day from now on, one day from now on, what is the date? And Excel is going to help you to show you that, right? See that? 29, one day from now is 30. Now, what is this one here? This one is that it has a code. 
it means that the Sunday and the and the Saturday and the Sunday is is the uh is the rest day. Okay, so it's a weekend day. So it's like this here. Now that become very interesting is that so the one is that from twenty nine you move one day ahead from here. So what is the usage for this? Well, we can use it for many purposes, such as you deliver. So, for example, you receive a shop. You uh, you go and buy. I, I go and buy a Doraemon, uh, soft toys, and then it's uh, and uh, let's say I buy it two days, right? So I want to. Then the seller says that, uh, three days later, huh, you gonna receive it. So what's the three days later? What's the day? Right? Just calc calc right? If I want to refer to the calculator, uh, the calendar would be this one, two, three. Ah, uh, three days. So, but I can also use the work day functions. Now, if it's a uh, the work day and the work day is different is that the work day is always uh, Sunday and Saturday will be the uh, weekends. But then work day is different. Work day not international is different. Right? Is that you can specify which day it is. So let's say the seller, the shopping seller says it's three day, right? Or the TikTok business seller says that it's three days, and then comma, and then you can have a weekend. Weekend is that you can use the Saturday and Sunday. So if you want that, or maybe you say it's uh, uh my country uh my country actually will uh uh rest on Friday so on Saturday so that would be seven so if it's seven okay and enter so then you can see that this is the date go to home click on this here choose the short date still a last way so you just put it here okay. So that is it. You see that? That's the first day. Okay. So, so how do you applicable, right? Is that uh, let's say you know that today is not twenty nine. Let's say let's say today is on the ten. So on the ten. So I want to know when when is it my last work day, right? The last work day. So it should be Sunday and Saturday. Then of course it will be thirty. Uh, it will be thirty first because you can see that here. Now what if what if what if you work? Uh, you have a very strange work day. Uh, you also rest on Tuesday. Now look at that. No, it doesn't work, right? But that's okay. Let's just change it to here. I'm referring to here. Mm. Yeah, wait. Let me see. Is supposed to be oh yeah that's because that okay okay wait uh just a pretty there here now what it does here is that uh it takes the end of month of the current dates plus one day uh, very strange right let's see here what is this end of month so end of month is that equal end of month so again, you have these dates, change here to short dates. So which is 31st? 31st is the end of month. Now, what it does is that it plus one more day. So why does it plus one more day? Let's see. That will be this. So then, it return one day. Ah, okay, from here, from here it move. You see there's a negative one? So negative one means that a back to the future right? <laughs> so that doesn't work that way um but you should be fair you can figure it out uh is that i want you to think about it right what what is it really there right so from work day to this work day so you you understand that it's from this 29 and then three days ahead so and Assuming that it's Sunday and Saturday will be, oh no, seven is that, uh, it's Friday and Saturday. So you see that Friday and Saturday, Friday and Saturday. Aha. Uh -huh. So Friday and Saturday. So now that become very interesting is that uh, if Friday and Saturday is working, so it will be something like this. So the code will be become like this. So you see that one zero zero, and the function is called text joy. You can use this text joy, and this is a function available in three six five, yeah, Office three six five. So now 
I'm going to plug it into this work day. And there is the end of work. So why he say that you need to plus one? And why is this a negative one? The negative one is just to travel uh, backward or forward, right? So if it's forward, it will be a positive value. So let's say I negative one. So it become 26. So it's 29 and you backward. Backward one day of a work day, you excluding the Sunday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you see, it's 26. You see that? This is very interesting. Now, why we want to talk about this uh, is that because Malaysia is going to implement, some company is going to implement some, right? Is that for their work way, right? For their work way. So now, uh, you gotta think about it, right? What if, what if uh, government say I'm gonna implement for their what if, right? So everything is possible. Well, we can plan ahead with this kind of tools. So we can create calendars and and ca uh, match it, right? So we have all the state here. Oh yeah, so that's it. That is how you how uh, the work day works. The one means that one day ahead of this twenty nine, back to the future, you get a date and a working date, and then you really can back to date. And to time travel, I remember it vividly. Declaration of Independence. Or witness the birth of Christ? Here's a red letter date in the history of science. November 5th, 1955. Yes, of course, November 5th, 1955. Aha, very good, very good. So, talking about Back to the Future, it happens that Excel has a story about this, right? So everything shares here. So yeah, I can watch this to see that. Excel come in a long way, man. called Microsoft. They were talking about um, application software. There was this inkling of, yeah, you know, they were going to develop a spreadsheet product and a word processing product. I was very impressed by the um, idea of software as a business, software being separated from hardware. I believed in software. And when I came to Microsoft, my first job was to be the product manager on a product called Multiplan. Multiplan was distinguished by an extreme degree of portability. In the early days of personal computers, there was really quite a large number of different computers that came onto the market uh, using different processors, using different architectures. So our bet at that time was on diversity. On, on being able to run on as many different uh, computers as possible. And probably Multiplan was, was one of the most ported applications of all time. At, at one point, we were running on 50 different computers. Now, Multiplan didn't do as well as we wanted it to do. It did reasonably well in international markets, but not so well in the US market. It was because we got leapfrogged by a product called Lotus 1, 2, 3. When I started in uh, 84, the spreadsheet market was virtually 100% MS-DOS and Lotus 1, 2, 3. They had 
completely dominant market share, not just for spreadsheets, but they were the by far the most dominant app, I think, in, in the software, PC and software industry. After we saw how successful Lotus 123 was, we were kicking off the next generation of our spreadsheet, the project that would ultimately replace Multiplan. And the initial code name for that project was Odyssey. Ultimately, that's what became Microsoft Excel. Now, most people don't know that when Odyssey was kicked off in October of 1983, it was focused on being a better spreadsheet than Lotus 123 on the PC, not on graphic user interface. And so a brilliant programmer named Doug Clunder had figured out how to do the calculation algorithm in two dimensions simultaneously so that we could recalculate even faster than Lotus 123. By the spring of 1984, Bill and I were convinced that we really needed to bet on graphic user interface. And so we made a tough decision. We went to the team and said that we're gonna shift from doing Odyssey on the PC and instead focus its initial release on the Apple Macintosh and then ultimately on Microsoft Windows. Experience is 